When I first heard the name Skinny Puppy, I thought it was really funny. Does that sense of humor end with the name, or do you hear it in the music? The name originally comes around from seeing everything through life through the dog, a dog's eyes, which is an extremely numb sort of character. Yeah, mm -hmm. It has to deal with life situations and without responding to them in any sort of uh, outgoing kind of way. Looking at everything from knee level. Is there anything positive in life you feel disposed to write about? Anything positive? Mm, well, I think positive no, no, positiveness will only come once people realize that the problems exist and start solving them. Mm -hmm. And once they solve them, then there's something nice to write about. Well, then when are we going to see an upbeat, bouncy Christmas album out of Skinny Puppy? Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a perfect number. <laughs> Yeah, it has been very, very, very dangerous at times. Uh, of course, uh, Ogre being the one uh, submitting himself to dangerous punishment every night for uh, last tour, which is 51 shows. By the end of the tour, I was surprised he was still alive. Mm. I mean, I don't think uh, I don't think anybody could really put themselves through some of the pain he's put himself through. But he's just into it so much that he doesn't feel the pain. There's a framework in which Ogre operates him, but basically it's spontaneous each night, is it not? Some shows can range from uh, just uh, sort of laid back, kind of um, lurking, to a rampant psycho. What do you think when you're on stage I, and I you see scared. it? I get scared. I never know what he's going to do. You know, he has 100% uh, control over what he does, and, and most of it, what he does is uh, is thought up. Uh, sp you know, there's a lot of spontaneity with him, even though he's got a, a rough guideline on what he's going to do. There's always a room for you know the new. The new thing that surprises everybody. There's there's people out there that gotta go out and find the music that it, that is hard hitting enough for them to get their emotional discharge their release you know mm -hmm. I'm one of those people I need heavy duty music to get to give me my heavy duty uh, energy for the day or whatever you know there's a time and a place for all of it so we've always claimed from the beginning that this music isn't for everybody and uh, for people to make up their own minds and uh, on, on whether it's for them but you know for the people that do need it we are there and they're gonna have to hunt a little to find out mm -hmm. but when they do find out then usually they they accept it started out musically on this song it was a bit of an experiment and to see how far we could could actually take this melody that we that we came up with and it was a bit bit of a surprise for us you know we don't actually sit down to try and write a, a commercial song or a non-commercial song it just so happens that when we write it turns out the way it does so in this particular case the the, the experiment turned out into something where um, we left the music very plain and very simple and the issue that we're dealing with on top of it is a plain and very simple issue too, the issue of animal rights and mm -hmm. vivisection. So we thought to make people listen a little bit, we would you know, hold back a little bit, not necessarily for a commercial single, but for an attempt for people to listen to the lyrics and see what we're talking about.
There was a lot of concepts and ideas, you know, I liked from that situation as well. But, you know, there was, uh, you know, like having, you know, flirted with that, I realized there was other aspects that I wanted to explore. And uh, so I, you know, the only way to really do that was, you know, was to start a new idea and project. And as well, you know, I wanted to do vocals and stuff. And uh, there really wasn't, you know, I mean, in that situation, there really wasn't any need for me to do them. I find that one of the identifying marks of industrial music, the vocalist, the, the sort of mutated uh, lyrics and the mutated voice. That's true. Uh, when, when you hear that voice, you go, mm -hmm. that's industrial music. Does it have to be that way? Yes or no, you know, I think it just depends uh, <clears throat> what you're, you know, I mean, I think in one sense, it's good because it does give it that I identity, you know, like, uh, like when you hear like hip hop, it has the beat, you know, you can right away you sort of like you put it, you know, unfortunately put it into a bracket, right? But I think, you know, there's a definite trend for distorted vocals to be linked to this kind of music. And uh, I think at the same time it is good because, you know, the abrasiveness does set it apart from everything else, you know. I think there isn't too many other music, you know, parts where they actually use that kind of like vocal effect and that, even though at times it is overused, you know. Average person nowadays is getting kind of tired of the same old rock and roll bit and so I think people might be looking for something a little bit different something that's a little bit more current and full of elements that are happening around you each day I think are you know, quite important even though like I think uh, with bands like us they don't really you know we don't get a lot of airplay on the video so you know it's you know you might see it once or twice on a certain show and then never again so It's gone more harder and more radical. I think it always has to in order to get noticed more, you know, because it always seems to be like, unless you become, you know, and you should do something really radical and crazy, nobody seems to notice, you know. You have to scream a lot louder. Thank you very much. Now, when I knew you those years ago, yeah. back in Vancouver, and you'd be tinkering around it, and you got your first keyboard, did you ever think it would go this far? No, not at all. I mean, back then it was just like, you know, because of a couple of other friends like Kevin and them were in, involved in bands, it was always like, oh, it'd be great to be involved in a band. And, uh, but no, I mean, no, I don't think we ever took it, I never took myself serious enough to be able to think that we could get from that point to this point. And, uh, but, you know, at the same time, it's, it's, it's kind of great that it happened that way because we didn't expect a lot. So now that things are happening, it, it just sort of makes the end result, you know, a lot bigger. 
you know, it's designed kind of like something we've been doing for fun. And so, you know, for us it's great. Now we're having more fun, so. You know, people are actually paying to see us now, <laughs> which is, <laughs> which is strange kind of concept. Yeah. <laughs> we, we still don't take ourselves too serious, you know. We're st we still just like enjoying doing it, and that's sort of like the bottom line. And you haven't played your hometown of Vancouver. Where? Vancouver. Oh, Vancouver. Remember Vancouver? Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's like this distant place on the west coast. That's, uh, yeah, it, it's kind of it's kind of odd. Um, I think we're trying to keep this con you know concept of uh, not playing in our hometown until uh, they break down the doors. Yeah.